Hey everyone, happy Monday. Let's jump into some quick tips for peak training as I'm going into my peak training weeks for the New York City Marathon. I've been running marathons for a few years now, so for those who don't know, I've been running uh, the New York City Marathon, I've run the Chicago Marathon, um, I've also been running a lot in New York City in other races um, where I was based and living for a while, um, 5Ks, 10Ks, other road races, all the way up to the 60 kilometer distance or a 37 mile race around Central Park um, in Manhattan. So I have a lot of experience with distance running and I just want to share some of my tips and everything along the way um, and also just have this channel to motivate myself to continue to train at my best and do the things that you know I'm trying to relate to you as well. So before we dive in any deeper, uh, if you can leave a like on the video, that would be awesome. And if you want to kind of follow along and see what I'm doing for the New York City Marathon, consider subscribing to the channel as we have a lot more content coming. Uh, and I'll be filming myself hopefully running the New York City Marathon, talking about all the gear that I'm using, things like that all along the way. So what are some of my must have or must do things during my peak training or my peak weeks? The first thing is sleep. Um, I do like to get at least eight hours of sleep. Um, I think a lot of people may need even more. Um, it's really important to get that sleep, to let your muscles recover, um, to allow your body to actually absorb all that training that you're putting in during the peak marathon training weeks. Um, without sleep, your body's just not going to recover. Without deep sleep, your body's not going to be able to absorb all that training and get you prepared for the next day where you're going to ask a lot of your legs and your body again. It's a lot of beating, putting them, uh, you know, through the paces on the roads. Um, you know, it's a lot that you're asking your body to continue to develop those muscles, develop your, your cardiovascular system, and sleep is 100% a must for me and should be for you as well as you're approaching your highest mileage in your marathon training block. The next thing that I'm always making sure that I'm doing pretty much throughout any day, but especially during the peak marathon training, is hydrating, drinking a lot of water throughout the day. You can't make up for the you know loss of water in your, through your sweat that you're going to have by just drinking some water before you go for your run and trying to replenish it after you go for your run. You should be drinking water throughout the entire day to make sure that you're always hydrated and your body has what it needs again as far as fluids. Um, you know I've measured myself you know going on some of the you know 18 mile runs throughout the summer, um, and I've lost as much as you know eight pounds, um, including taking in a lot of water, sometimes over a liter of water during the actual running. Um, with gels, things like that, I've still gotten home and been eight pounds lighter than when I went out for the run. So it's all water weight. It's all things that I've sweat out of my body. And that's how important it is to always make sure you're keeping fluids you know, in your body or else you're going to just not have enough and you're not going to feel good out on a run. You're not going to feel good again when you get home. You're not going to be able to continue to train at the level that you want to, no matter what it is that you're going for, no matter what level of marathoner you are. You want to make sure that you have plenty of water throughout the entire day and really the entire training block of the New York City Marathon or any other marathon that you may be running. The next is kind of a multi-step thing, but it really is, you know, about eating healthy and eating right, especially during your peak training. So that way your body gets all the nutrients and things that it needs to, again, absorb what you're putting in as far as work and recover and get you ready for the next day. So for me, that's generally going to be, um, you know, trying to avoid processed foods and things like that, especially at the peak point of training. Again, um, you know, maybe having less pizza kinds of stuff like that, less chips less of anything that's snack foods, really just trying to focus on good, um, you know, whole nutrients and good, you know, natural foods going into my body that are really going to give me the nutrients I need without weighing me down with anything else. Um, of course, I'm not perfect. I'm not an elite athlete. So there's other things that I'm eating. I'm not really following a really strict diet during my whole training block, but especially when we're going into the higher mileage, when I'm asking more from my body that I've asked for it either in a while or maybe ever as far as mileage and workload, um, I'm going to try and start to put the best things that I can in my body. Um, for me, that's making sure I have a lot of fruits and vegetables. I've been doing a lot with smoothies. Um, you know, that's just like an easy way for me to get fruits and vegetables and things in at lunchtime or breakfast instead of, um, you know, something else like a sandwich, something like that. 
Um, also at breakfast, maybe some yogurt with fruit and things like that, or oatmeal is going to be my go-to meals for most of the last three weeks of my peak training before um, tapering and going into a marathon. People forget fruits and vegetables are a great source of carbs. Um, you don't have to have just you know bread or potatoes or things like that. Fruits and vegetables have carbs too that are good for you. Um, they're also they've got a lot of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, fiber, things like that that are really important to be getting into your body during training. Um, obviously, they're better than you know a snack food that may also have carbs, but it's just not the same. Um, you know you want to be getting it from you know or at least for me things like fruits and vegetables. The next thing is my protein. I'm making sure that I'm still getting protein during my peak training. Um, you know, for me, that may be some like lean beef, chicken, things like that. Um, but you can also, you know, don't forget, get protein from things like beans, lentils and other stuff. You know, whether you don't eat meat or you just don't want to eat as much meat during this period. Say fish are good. Or you need some healthy fats and things because if you remember when you're doing your long runs, you're actually training your body to start to use and burn fat for fuel instead of just carbs. You can only store so much carbs ready to burn in your body at a given period of time. So when you're starting to run for over an hour, over an hour and a half, two hours, you really need to be able to either refuel with carbs or teach your body to burn fat instead of carbohydrates for energy. You can get those healthy fats from things like nuts, um, olive oils if you're cooking, you know, cooking with olive oil or canola oil, um, and also salmon. And that's why I say fish is a good source of protein and other you know, omega-3 fatty acids and things like that. Fish and salmon are going to be good for you know, those fats in your diet. Um, if you haven't already, you really need to try. And I, you know, again, I'm not perfect, so I haven't really cut completely out of my diet alcohol but during peak training when you're asking your body to go 20 miles plus you know in some of these weekend runs you really want to cut alcohol out of your diet um, because it's going to throw off your sleep your body's not going to be able to get into a state of deep sleep to recover um, and you're just not going to be able to perform well even in just training uh, so you want to cut alcohol out of your diet and that's something that I really do you know when I'm really buckling down and knowing that I'm going into my peak training doing the most reps on the track doing the most hill repeats, doing the most mileage. I have to get alcohol completely out of my diet. If not, you know, throughout a whole training block, if I'm really going for like a PR um, for any kind of race, you know, alcohol is not going to be in the mix at all for the whole training block. I think the most important point for me here is that I think that running, if you're going to pursue it, if you want to do it, whether it's a hobby or something you want to get better and better at, you have to find a way to be happy with what you're doing in your training, to find joy in the run. So if you're doing any of these things, cutting anything out of your diet too quickly, making it not fun to go out for a run, you're not going to keep continue doing it for a long period of time. So make changes slowly, um, find a way to mix things in little by little, and you know, overall that's going to be the best for you for the long term. Okay, so to recap, so far I've got sleep, hydrate, adjusting my diet, making sure it's best for me and my training, and the final thing that I'm making sure that I'm doing during my peak training week is using the foam roller, stretching, and doing my little strength exercises and things that, uh, you know, that I do on a regular basis as a runner. Because as the mileage increases, you want to make sure all the little lateral muscles and things on the inside and on the, well on the outside and then other muscles on the inside of your legs and ankles are strong enough and balanced when you're putting in a lot of work um, on the road. I also have one of those massage guns that I'm using regularly. Um, again, you know, as the mileage is increasing and really throughout the whole training block to try and stay healthy, um, you know, from the very beginning. Um, and then just stretching, you know, in the morning, maybe not necessarily before a run, but stretching a little bit after a run, maybe just in the morning as well to make sure that my muscles are, you know, loosened up and everything ready for the day. That's, you know, really the fourth thing that's really important for me during my peak marathon training. So with those tips and things that I do uh, during my peak training, well, what does my peak training look like right now? Um, I think I mentioned that, you know, my 50 miles weekly volume is going to be kind of where I max out for this marathon. Um, it's just kind of a comeback, you know, making sure that I'm ready for the distance, making sure that I'm kind of, you know, within some modest goals that I may have for this year of just staying under four hours, um, being able to do that relatively comfortably so I can actually film and things while I'm running, um, just get different, you know, angles and things, give someone an inside perspective of what the starting village looks like, what it's like on the starting line and all the different spots and crowds and things for the New York 
York City Marathon that you know maybe most people don't get to see, uh, maybe I can share that with you here. So in order to do that, you know, like I said, 50 miles, this is how it's going to break down at least this week. Monday, today, we have to go out for our six mile run. Tuesday, we're doing seven by 400 meters on the hill. So that's going to be 400 meter effort, very similar to the effort on a track, but probably a little bit slower because the effort is going to change from flat to, you know, some vertical increase. So we'll do that on Tuesday. Wednesday is another five mile run. Thursday is a 50 minute tempo run. Friday is rest. Saturday is a 10 mile run with um, mixed in miles at marathon pace. And then Sunday is our 20 mile long run. Um, there will be another week with this other 50 mile peak and another 20 mile run as well before we start to taper. But this is the first again of the highest volume that I'll be at for this training block. Um, so, you know, like I said, this is the most that I'm going to be asking my, from my body in a while. Um, it's not the most mileage I've run, no, but because I'm building back up from a relatively low mileage point, you know, this is why I need to make sure I'm following all the different rules with fueling, stretching, foam rolling, hydrating, sleeping, because it's been a while since I've asked my body to do this and it's still adjusting and rebuilding all that muscle, rebuilding all that cardio. So I need to do the things to keep me healthy and let my body continue to get stronger again. So hopefully that is helpful for anyone who's just, you know, starting out, who's, you know, going through some marathon training themselves for the first time. Again, no matter what level you're at, you know, you're asking a lot from your body, likely in the, you know, couple months leading up to the actual marathon where you're at a lot of volume, a lot of strain on your body. So follow some of these tips if you want to try and stay healthier. If you want to avoid injuries, it's worked for me for the most part. I've had little things here and there, but I have luckily never had a, a really serious injury or anything that put me out for a really extended period of time. You know, I think the worst I've ever had was when I was training for an ultra marathon. I had some some stuff with my IT band, but I rested it for a couple weeks and, you know, I was able to still run the race. So luckily I've, you know, been fortunate just Sticking to these few simple rules, I think sleep is probably the most important one, especially as you go into race day. Um, but with that said, I'm going to go out, get ready for my run now. And, uh, you know, let's just keep putting in the work and we're almost there. So it starts to get pretty exciting. Just keep my, I'm going to try and keep my runs, you know, still nice and steady and easy when they need to be, uh, even though the excitement starts to kick in. But let's get out there on the road.